Name's Romolo Camargo. Everybody knows me by Romy. I'm a Chief Warrant Officer three in the United States Army. I always knew that, you know, I wanted to be in the military, so I went ahead April 6, 1995. Uh, I was a signal support system specialist, basically a communications guy. Man, being in Big Greenbury means a lot to me. I mean, just because to me it was gratifying. I was having a blast out there with the guys and working together. Everybody's doing their, their job. Everybody knows where each person's on their left and right. I mean, you know, it, it, that feeling of, of you know, having somebody that you know is going to be there for you at any time, in any moment, is just, is, is an awesome feeling. So we opted to do a humanitarian assistance mission. We came under attack, probably about between 25, 30 enemy forces with machine gun fire, RPGs, and AK rounds, and then we were receiving a direct fire as I was on the, the back of the truck. I remember turning to my left, looking for the box of grenades that I had in the Humvee. And as I did that, I felt like somebody had punched me in the back of the neck. And at that time, I heard, uh, I heard my buddy Reese start saying, Chief got hit, Chief got hit. And, uh, that's all I remember. You know, till this day, I really don't remember when they told me that I was paralyzed. So, you know, I dealt with it, you know. Hey, you know, I'm still alive, you know. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave me another chance to live, to be by my wife, with my children. Keep a positive attitude, keep that fighting attitude that, you know, that I learned way back when I was a private in Ranger Battalion. Was always fighting, never quit, you know. Surrender's not a Ranger word, that's for sure. It's, you know, people don't know that, you know, a paralyzed person lives here in this house because everything is, seems so normal. That's the way I feel. I, I feel like it's, it's supposed to be like that. I'm, I don't feel paralyzed, I don't feel handicapped at all. You know, being here at the house, you know, my house is uh, fully adapted and, you know, we do, it's like I have him dressed playing Wii all the time and, you know, before he has to do homework and I have my daughter Alina who's about to go to the Air Force, she's, you know, she's running around being a teenager. He is literally my favorite person in the whole entire world. He's such an inspiration to me because he never feels negative about like what happened to him, ever. They're just happy, like they don't think like, well, why did this have to happen to us? You know, they're always happy and content with their lives. I know Romulo since I was 12 years old, more than 26 years ago in Venezuela. And uh, he gave me my first kiss when I was 14 years old. You know, I had the pleasure of being her first kiss. Maybe she had the pleasure of me being her first kiss. We have been together for 13 years and we got married in 2006. Oh, Gabby's the champ. She's a go-getter, she's self-motivated. She loves working together with me. She's my right hand, uh, she's everything to me. Gabby was always keeping me motivated. Gabby was, was the pinnacle of the family now. And what always struck me was, was how just committed and devoted and dedicated Gabby was to his recovery. I mean, you know, the word champion is, is probably an understatement. She was constantly 100% um, committed to, you know, his recovery. And it was just amazing uh, how she remained so resolved and so resolute in, in supporting him. She was always there when the doctors came in and did, did their daily review, she was always there and she would ask questions and then she would go research. But 18 months at the hospital, I learned a lot, you know, by his side all the time, taking day by day. 
the only thing that I knew, Romulo needs me, and I'm gonna be by his side no matter what. I'm just gonna take uh, one day at a time, and, and that's what I've been doing for the last five years. Gabby really provided the uh, foundation for recovery. She took an active part, not only with the nurses and the doctors, and then she also took an active role in mentoring all the other wives that were there for their husbands as well. And what was unique about it is, is Gabby and Romy, you know, basically became a mentor for 18, 19, 21 year old service members who their families, you know, would, would not really, you know, come every day to the VA hospital. So not only was Romy and Gabby mentoring the kids, but once the family members came, they would take an active role and help them understand the VA system as well. You know, some of our wounded warriors that come in and sometimes they don't have the family support that I had, or sometimes they'd be alone by themselves. Wanted to help out and talk to them and I'd tell them, you know, about my rehab and what was working for me and maybe they should try this. Or just, just giving them ideas and just hanging out. You know, quite frankly, you know, they, they become kind of kind of like family because you're there together. You're there doing rehab together. You're there trying to get better together. Gabby, seeing the, the effect that going to a center in Orlando was having, and the way things were, were working so great for me, the way I was getting stronger working out, Gabby said, you know, we can, I think we can do this. You know, we can open up a center of our own, a gym that we can have together. Let's do something. Let's, I know that we can do this in Tampa. Uh, this is not about Romulo. This is about the SEI community here in Tampa. Being able to have this center here in Tampa wouldn't negate the travel to Orlando where I currently go uh, and do rehab right now. Um, it's a two hour drive, uh, takes up the whole, whole days. I mean, that is a treacherous road. You know, what if that van flipped over? What if that van was in an accident? You know, I mean, and he's making that drive. Other. Uh, spinal cord injury patients are making that drive two, three times a week. Uh, and we, we can do better than that. You know, Tampa can do better than that. And, and we need that center here because people need it. We decided that the name Stay in Step would definitely be right for the, for the type of, of gym that, that we want to open up. You know, Stay in Step, uh, a step forward towards recovery. That way, you know, everybody's focused on one thing, basically focusing on, on your rehab um, and having the support that we're going to give at the rehab center. I know that when you are a working out in a center, going to a rehab center, after a while, it's like a family. You know, everybody talking about their own things giving you ideas, this is what is new, there is a new research. So it's going to be, the whole environment is going to be not just doing exercise, it's sharing stories about the daily routine, daily life. Uh, we are going to have the right people working at the center, but this is very important for me, that I can, you know, talk about somebody and give you hope give you a war, you know what, let's talk, tomorrow is going to be a better day. We can talk about each other's experiences, you know, we can have maybe a breakout session where we would get together and talk about, you know, each other's recovery or what we could, what we could do to, to help each other. So what I believe is that this facility located where there are 4.3 million people uh, and many, many veterans. We have uh, in the state of Florida a huge veteran population, 400,000 uh, in our immediate area, many of those who've wounded, and not only those who have served in the military, but other SCI patients who've been victims of automobile accidents and other types of accidents. In my communications with the leadership of the VA at James A. Haley, I've learned that 
uh, they believe in what uh, Gabby and Romy are doing and that it is necessary to have one of these type stay and step facilities here to complement and augment what the SCI facility at uh, James Haley is currently offering. That they'll never be able to offer what the needs are for Romy and people like Romy. With everybody's support here in the community, we can bring up a center that's going to impact so many lives. In my heart, I know that this is going to be something wonderful for the city of Tampa. I see myself working at the center, helping the people, uh, talking to them, you know, give them hope. You know what? No matter what, let's do it. Don't think about the time, just do it. Just come here, laugh, let's work out, let's talk. Through Romy's recovery, Gabby was there every step of the way. She was like a point man on a patrol. I mean, she was constantly looking for new answers. She never accepted no for an answer. She never accepted status quo for an answer. And she was always looking for new options, new alternatives. She's always collaborating and talking to, you know, to people about other ways to do things. Have we tried this? Have we tried that? She never, ever rested. She wants to continue that collaborative spirit you know, that, that real-time communication with other uh, spinal cord injury patients around the world and their families and their doctors and their therapists and what's working, what's not working, and she's just tireless in that effort. I think we're gonna have a great center where people can come, work out, recover, have quality of life, be able to interact with other paralyzed personnel and um, be able to, to have that support we can be one big family here in Tampa. Romy and Gabby Camargo serve as iconic figures and they are so suited to be able to lead an effort like this because they are the models to emulate for our society and particularly the community of those SCI patients who are in great need. They understand it, they live it every day, and they live it with a passion about getting better day in and day out. We believe that if we provide them with the resources and the wherewithal to be able to do that, that uh, he will in fact achieve his dream and be an inspiration for all other spinal cord injury patients throughout the United States. What he needs now are partners. So investors, uh, a partner on a location, equipment sponsors, uh, all of the formula that, that any business needs to become successful, Romy needs as well. They have embraced the challenge. They, they don't sit around and wait to see what happens. They don't look inward and feel sorry for themselves. They're, they are attacking this problem and they are doing it. They're looking at it as an opportunity to lift other people up and to lift themselves up. And I mean, that kind of courage, uh, that kind of talent to set up a center that, that takes their attitude and what they've learned along the way and shares that with other spinal cord injury patients. How can we not do that? I mean, not just Romy, but, but certainly Gabby, with all of, the, all of the life experience that she's now developed on this, we need them at the helm. This is a good chance to help the other wounded guys and the other injured guys and girls that are out there stay motivated to you know, come and interact with us and be able to, to have a place that they can call theirs. We are putting 100% of passion. We are gonna work with determination, with moral commitment for this community. But we can't do it by ourselves. We need your help. We need your support, the community's support. So there's a number of ways that people can contribute to this effort. They can donate money, which will make a huge impact on realizing this dream. But they can also donate time, talent, and expertise. and Tell a friend, share this initiative, uh, mobilize the community, get people involved. And this is a great story. This is a story that will motivate people to get involved. This is a story that will motivate soldiers and veterans to, to get back into the game. So, you know, any of those will make a big difference. And we hope that everybody will take some step toward recovery and some step toward helping Romy and Gabby pursue this dream.